three keepers. Four. Four. Four big, beautiful crabs. They're about to look beautiful in that can cooker. <laughs> <laughs> What's up everybody, Blue Gabe. We're in Jupiter, Florida and we're going crabbing. But first, I had to catch some bait. The best crabbing bait is fresh silver mullet. I got a pretty good mess of it. But I still need more. We got 15 traps, that's what we're illegally allowed to have. And I want at least 45 mullet. Look at that cool needlefish. We have these in freshwater now too when we're crappie fishing in all of our lakes. These needlefish, and they're a nuisance. We're gonna see if a crab likes him. But this is what we're after. Silver mullet. Just make a little cut in them, put three in each trap, and that's done. We're sitting here catching bait and the big old manatee just swam up all peaceful as can be. I didn't know what it was. I looked down and sure enough, big manatee. Now all right y'all, we finally, finally have enough bait. I don't know why, but today the mullet haven't been really thick and the ones that are here are spooked. Probably because Ryan Nitt has been catching too many of them, but I got them this time. I got them. I wanted to have at least three to four per trap. And I think we got it now. I know we have enough but the ones that we have are small. That net pool right there is a lot bigger, so we're good to go now. So this, I haven't shown you all my new net very much yet, my black pearl cast net, hear that? This net, the lead line is encased in rope. It's not like your traditional cast net that would chip the gel coat or whatever. And also if you hang it on oysters or a log, that heavy duty rope will pull right off. It's a little bit heavier than a traditional net, if I'm gonna be honest, because once all that rope on the lead line gets wet, it holds a little bit more weight than a normal net, but still easy to throw and caught a bunch of bait. So black pearl cast nets, good in my book. So you'll always hear me talk about power poles. Again, I'm gonna repeat myself. They don't pay me a dollar, but they change the game when it comes to fishing. Even my 70 year old dad, once he fished with me a few times, he's like, yep, I gotta have one of them. I can pull up to these sandbars and a lot of current, power pole down in one second. I don't have to deal with a bow anchor, a stern anchor, nothing. It's just, and the only reason I'm saying this is so many of you guys ask us, what we use. Well, there you go. Black Pearl cast net, power poles, Suzuki motor. The boat we're in is a 24 foot blackjack. This is my mom. That's my son, Jake. We've got a four mile run to the back of the Lachachi River. We'll see y'all when we get there. So I like to get my mullet pre-cut. Drop them right in the hole, right into the bucket. Like I said earlier, I want three or four per trap. We've already put a bunch of traps out just to make room. So it wasn't so clustered in here when I was trying to film. So I like to put my traps anywhere from four foot to about nine foot of water. So the traps we've already put out, I've staggered them back and forth. And every time I put one out, I mark my GPS. So I know right where they're at when I come back in case you know, somebody steals one or whatever, you forget. 
I mark it on my GPS and I know where it's at. But these cutting boards are pretty cool. This is the only second time I've used it. I actually forgot I had it when I was in the garage today. I saw it. I said, whoo, that'll be helpful. Now I can drive the boat, Grandma can film, and Jake can put bait in the trap and set the traps as I'm driving. Work as a team. All right, so we have the last five traps ready. When I put the bait door, the, the door that you open to put the bait in, when I throw the trap in, I want that to be against the bottom, just so a catfish or something like that can't open it. So we only have five traps left. I'm gonna put them about an eighth of a mile apart, in about eight foot of water, and let Jake do the work. All right, you ready? Go ahead. Get up there and get your next one ready. You ready? Yeah. Go. You ready to eat some crabs? Yeah. All right, y'all, that's a wrap. We put out 15 traps. See all those little X's? Y'all don't be messing with them. Those are my traps. So right now we're headed in, gonna drop this boat off of my parents and we're headed to Fort Lauderdale Airport because the reason we're out here crabbing is John, the guy that I did the snakehead gigging video with and the sea bass video with in Maryland, he's flying in tonight and we're headed to go gig some snakeheads down here. Our bullseye snakehead. He's never seen one, he's only ever seen the northern snakehead. And then tomorrow we'll be back to pull all these traps. See, I don't go anywhere, it's gonna get real real soon all right y'all we're here to pull the traps it's the next day we let all of them sit for 24 hours now we're gonna see what they got we got john from maryland jake my mom here they come oh yeah all right hold on one sec you ain't scared he's gonna bite you no nah, i've been doing this for a long time <laughs> commercial crabbing so one of the reasons I wanted to do this when John was here is John's a commercial crabber up in Maryland. So I wanted to let him see that Maryland's not the only place with blue crabs. Look at that big guy, whoa. <laughs> All right, so we got four keepers out of the first pot and we got 14 more pots to go. Come here. Pull it out, come on. Put the muscles behind it. I feel crabs. You feel crabs? <laughs> Got two keepers. So we're dumping the bait. Normally I would reset them and come back and check them again tomorrow, but we're really only wanting enough to eat right now. So we'll pull all these traps. I'm gonna put them back in the water and when we're done eating, we're gonna pull up to the bank and eat way back in the river. Then on the way out, I'll put all the traps back in the boat. Probably should have brought my gaff. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that mumbo jumbo right there. That one's mine, not yours. <laughs> yeah. So in Maryland, we grade them on a size. So what we would have was this would be considered a number one jumbo. And uh, these smaller ones here would be like a number two. Like this guy would be a number one also. He'd be a number one. And what we do is we measure them from, from tip to tip. He's going to be a number one in my pot in about 10 minutes, what he is. So we got five out of trap number three. Pulling up the trap number four now. Don't miss it.
Come on, show us some muscles. Let's see. Come on, pull it up on it button here. What? Goose egg. Our first goose egg is pot number four. What can you do? You can't catch them all. Woo! Look at that big one. But still only one. One's better than none. So one of the coolest things about crabbing is you can take your kids to do this and they'll enjoy it. There's not much pressure. They don't have to have a ton of skill. All they really got to be able to do is pull a trap in. So I think we got eight crabs already and we still got a bunch of traps. So one thing for sure, we're going to be breaking out the can cooker and the butter here in a minute. So you notice how these got dark rusty colored bellies on them? Yeah. They're good and hard crabs. You can take them. One of the other ways that we grade them is we'll take and pinch them on the corners here. And if they have any give, we call them white crabs or trash crabs, which means they just shed it and they haven't, you know, gotten all the way hard yet. So that's a good one? Yeah, this is a good one. This is a good one. This one's going in my belly. That's your fun fact of the week. All right, John, what's the most crabs you ever caught in one day in one pool? In one pool? 18 bushels. How many crabs is that, give or take? So a bushel is probably about 45 to 50 pounds. So it's a lot of crabs. <laughs> a thousand? More than that. It's probably close to like three to 4,000 crabs. Holy mackerel. Yeah. When they run in the We'd need a bunch more can cookers for three or 4,000 crabs. We're just hoping for 20. Uh -oh, he's struggling with this one. That's... Oh, yeah, we got that. Oh, I think. Oh, no, we just got a big one. We got a girlfriend for Frank. <laughs> oh, yeah, a little. We'll let most of them go except for those two big ones. So whenever we're crabbing, we don't keep the females. We only keep the bigger males. I think we're legally allowed to, but why? There's not much meat in them. Let them go and let them reproduce some more blue crabs for us in the future. Yeah. Perfect. We got some good ones in that one. Man, I'm gonna get yeah. a good job on Chesapeake Bay. He keeps doing a good job like that. <laughs> how many's in there, Jake? Uh, how many females? There's like three females in there. I can already taste the crab. Get this trap right here, Jake. There's ten crabs in all of them. Oh, there's a lot in here. There's a lot. You can feel them? <laughs> yeah, it just it's gained an extra like ten pounds. Oh, yep. One keeper. Two keepers. <laughs> So the last time we brought Frank back a female, he threw her butt out of the tank. So we might not put another female in there with him for a little while. Big one right there. Probably bigger than Frank. Look at how big that one is. I'll give you five bucks to stick your hand in there and hold it. Make it 150. Mom, what about you? Are you tough enough? Yeah, but I'm busy right now. You're busy what? Holding the chair down? Yeah. Oh. Got two keepers. We've got a good mess of crab. We definitely got a good mess. We'll have about 30 crabs when we're done, I imagine. There you go. Explain to everybody why it's a female. So you see the red tips on the claws? That's how you can tell an easy way just by looking in there to identify that it's a female. Show the bottom. Yeah, there you go. Or you can see the the apron. The male apron's real skinny and long where this was fat and wide and you know different colors. Uh, yeah. So we have six more traps to go. We already got 25 crabs, so we're winning. Put three keepers in here. Oh, yeah. Three real... keepers and one big one. Two big ones. Alright, I'm gonna go to the next trap. Okay. You only got two, Jake. We didn't exactly kill them in that one, but we got them. Yeah. So I've noticed with that zip tie, it slows people down from heisting your crabs, especially somebody in a kayak or something like that. Just a little thing I decided to do. 
Whoa. What's in there? You got a bonus catfish and a huge keeper snapper. Get him oh in here. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Look at that, that big old snapper. Snapper? Yeah. That is awesome. <laughs> oh, and I was gonna go snapper fishing while we're cooking the uh things. In. You were what? I was gonna go snapper fishing while we're cooking on the boat. In. You just got a catfish and a big old snapper. Check that out. All right, last pot, Jake. How many you think it has? Hopefully a bunch. Cross your fingers. How many? What are you saying? How many? Quick guess. Not a lot though. I'm not sure. One keeper. One Sally and one keeper. Now comes the fun part. We're gonna go find a spot to get out of the wind, set the little can cooker portable grill up, and cook us some crabs. We'll see y'all in a minute. So that's a bird called the curlew. And a little fun fact on that bird is back in the 70s and the 80s when they were running tons of drugs into Miami and down in the Everglades, when the drug lords would get, you know, not drug lords, but when the drug runners would get pinned down in the Everglades and had to hide, they'd feed on those curlews like crazy and they called them Everglades chickens. Cause that's such a predominant bird down there and it was easy for them to get. I've actually ate one or two, I'm not gonna explain where, <laughs> but they are very good to eat. All right, y'all, it is time to cook. We got probably, I don't know, 25, 30 crabs. We've turned a bunch of mediums loose just because we don't need to be greedy. So I got my little can cooker stove, this little steam basket. About a, I don't know, a quart of water. And then I've got a couple cups of white vinegar. About that much. I got the grill going already. Got my little rubber insert. Give it five minutes and we're ready to cook some crabs. Yep. All right, so while that pot's cooking up, we've decided to do the humane thing. And that is put them on ice because John is a crab connoisseur and he's gonna make us some crab soup tomorrow. Right now we're only gonna cook about a dozen or so, but we're gonna eat all of these crabs throughout this weekend. All right, it's time to add the crabs. And y'all can see they're euthanized, or at least they're really dormant. Put this lid on, clamp it down. About, I don't know, 10 minutes, we'll be eating crab. We got some Old Bay. I'm not putting seasoning in there until they're cooked. Just to me, it's wasting it. Once we cook them, we'll throw the guts out, break the tops off, put them back in there, warm them back up, and I'll put seasoning on them. All right, well, we ended up putting this little burner inside this drum because the wind, believe it or not, it didn't feel like there was much wind. But there was, there was enough to, I couldn't get it boiling real hot like I needed it. But these crabs are nice and done. Jake's ready to eat. Grandma Betty's ready to eat some fresh crabs. Are you ready, John? I'm ready. So we're gonna take these crabs, just pop the top off, clean the lungs and the guts out, and I'm gonna put them back on the heat with a little bit of Old Bay for just maybe a minute or two, just to warm them back up, and then we'll be ready to eat. We'll be right back. All right, so all we did is take the gills off and the guts out, put them in here, take some Old Bay. Get a bunch down there, put it back in here, put the lid on. All we're doing is warming it back up. Probably don't even need to because it's pretty hot. Got some butter melted. We're ready to eat. All right, y'all, that's a wrap. We got some crabs. You excited, Jake? Yeah. Look at that. We got snapper down there eating the fish that we threw out. So nothing's getting wasted. 
If we were home, we threw it in the garbage can, it would just go to the dump. Maybe a buzzer would get it. But where we threw it out here, Snapper already eating it. Here, Jake. Thank you. What's your favorite seasoning to put on them, John? Old Bay. Is that like a staple seasoning up there in Maryland? Yeah, you got that, and then people like a seasoning called J.O. seasoning. I don't really care for the J.O. I think it's a little too too salty, but Old Bay by far, I think, is my favorite. Do y'all get real big crab? We do, we do. You know, but these ones, I mean, it looks just like Maryland crab, so. <laughs> Did you think I was going to be taking you crabbing? I, I didn't. But I was like, you know, it might be able to teach these Florida boys something about blue crabs. <laughs> <laughs> he thought we were going to do something. So here's something I'm going to show you all right now. We're going to cut away for just a second. I caught a bunch of snakeheads down here. I thought we could go gigging because that's what John and I did together was gigging snakeheads. <laughs> so let's take it down to Fort Lauderdale and show you all how good we could gig a snake. <laughs> a bullseye snake. So, so we're going to leave here for just a second and head to Fort Lauderdale in a little canal in a little neighborhood full of snakeheads and show y'all how successful we were at gigging snakeheads. We'll be right back. All right, y'all, we've been looking for snakeheads for exactly one minute and we've already found two. John's got the gig and we're going to see if we can make this happen. But with snakeheads, you got to be super, super quiet. So we're going to ease up here, see if we can get it done. Go ahead. Missed him. That joke is fast. God, them jerks are quick. Yeah, you're gonna have to put your light up. Oh, he zigged right when it was coming. Dude, like. Dude, they are insanely fast. Like, how do they get that fast? You let him come closer to you. He had already turned here. <laughs> They're impossible. That's the fastest fish in the... We need the bow. <laughs> you can't... Be... We need the bow. They're too small for that. <laughs> yeah we got exactly zero i tried my hardest i threw that thing as hard as i could throw it and couldn't get any all right so when i met john we met on instagram and for those of y'all that don't follow me on instagram my instagram is at blue gabe i actually reached out to him i saw him gigging these northern snakeheads i'm like man i gotta go try that as seen on tv well, long story short, we went up there, made an awesome video. If you haven't seen it yet, check it out. I'll have it at the end of this video. But he flew into Fort Lauderdale last night about 7.30, and that's where most of our snakeheads are at. But we're gonna sit here and enjoy these crabs. I thank each and every one of y'all for watching. Thanks for subbing, thanks for subscribing. But we got a lot to do. John just got here. We're gonna go try to shoot a hog. We're going spec fishing tomorrow on an airboat with Adam. Hey. We're just trying to live life one day at a time and have as much fun as we can. But Jake, like Jake always says, we're getting the heck up out of here and we're doing what, Jake? We're getting the heck out of shape. See y'all.